Marvin sketch has the ability to determine the conformations of a molecule and the energy associated with each of the different conformations that it finds. Take the molecule 1,2-dibromoethane, draw it in Marvin sketch, then under tools, conformation, conformers, we can use the parameters that are in the table shown here to determine the different conformations of this molecule. If you ran that calculation for yourself, you would have produced two or maybe three different minimum energy conformations of 1,2-dibromoethane and the associated energies with each of these conformations. I've been able to generate three in my calculation, but it might vary from one computer to another whether you generate two or three. We know that each of these are minimum energies because we can see that each one is a staggered conformation as opposed to an eclipsed conformation. And we know from what we talked about in the last webcast that the staggered conformations are minima on our potential energy diagram. Two of the conformations that I've generated have the bromines on adjacent positions in the staggered form, whereas the other one has the bromines on opposite side of the molecule. We have names for these two different conformations. In the case where the bromines are on opposite sides, we call this the anti-conformation. In the cases where the bromines are in adjacent positions, we call these the Gauche conformation. And so you can see that the molecule dibromoethane has two different Gauche conformations. From the diagram at the right, we can see that the two Gauche conformations are mirror images of one another. They're non-superimposable mirror images, and so the two different Gauche conformations are in antiomeric conformations, and that explains why they have identical energies. Let's construct a torsional potential energy diagram for dibromoethane. Our three minima are represented here. The two Gauche conformations have identical energies, and the energy of the anti-conformation is below that of the Gauche conformation. Let's assign the dihedral angle of zero to the conformation that's shown here, in which we have a pair of bromine hydrogen bonds eclipsing one another. And let's assign that as an energy value that's going to be a barrier height. We know it's a barrier height because it's an eclipsing conformation above the minimum energy of our staggered conformation. Now if we do a torsional rotation in which we take the bromine in the back and rotate it counterclockwise, first by 60 and then a total of 120 degrees, we'll end up with the bromine in this new position that's shown here. This now eclipsing conformation also has a pair of hydrogen bromine bonds eclipsing it, and so it's just like the first one that we saw. These two barriers are going to be of the same height. Let's continue to do our torsional rotation, taking that bromine in the back first by 60 and then a total of 120 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. This bromine is now positioned behind the bromine that's out in front, and so these two bromine carbon bonds are eclipsing one another. And since bromine is such a large atom, two bromines that are eclipsing one another, we expect it to have a higher energy barrier than that associated with the pair of hydrogen bromine bonds eclipsing one another. Connecting each of the barriers to the adjacent energy minimum, we end up with the complete potential energy curve for dibromoethane. And now on our potential energy diagram, we see that the energy valley associated with the anti-conformation is different than the energy valleys associated with the two Gauche conformations. Since the anti and Gauche conformations have different energy values, we know that the molecule will distribute itself among these different energy minima, but favor the anti-conformation. To know just how much more anti there is than Gauche, we need to know what's the energy difference between these minima. Now technically this is a potential energy difference, but we'll approximate it to be delta G, the free energy difference between the Gauche and the anti-forms. If it's assumed that that's delta G, then we know from general chemistry that delta G is related to minus RT log K, where K would be an equilibrium constant that represents the equilibrium between the Gauche and the anti-conformations. And so at equilibrium, K would be a ratio between the anti and Gauche forms. It would be convenient for us to define a mole percent based on that equilibrium constant, and you can convince yourself by substituting the values of the ratio here, that indeed 
mole percent is related to k over 1 plus k. Now the formula isn't so important for you to remember, but I can give you some approximate values what differences in free energy correspond to different mole percent ante. So if the free energy of the ante form is lower, we're going to give it a negative sign. If it's lower by 1 kilocalorie per mole, we have 84% ante. If it's lower by 2 kilocalories per mole, we're up to 96% ante. And if it's lower by 4 kilocalories per mole, we have almost 100% of the ante conformation. Just 4 small kilocalories per mole mean that we favor almost exclusively the ante over the Gauche conformation. We've now generated the potential energy curve of dibromoethane. We saw that there were two different energy minima and that the energy difference between those minima could be related to the proportion of molecules in those two different states.